Good evening, everybody. Yes, it's B. Period Eugene Bear on YouTube, and R. U. Capital letters Eugene Bear on Facebook. He that hath an ear, human and spiritual ear, can you hear what the Holy Spirit is saying? That's why it's important to learn how to pray. Most Christians don't know how to pray. When they're sick, they pray serious conditions such as maybe cancer. They pray. They ask, why, Lord? Why me? I want the Spirit to speak to me and speak through me to you tonight. This afternoon I was at the bus stop and walking along the, uh, the campus on the campus trail near the channel. I was trying to express faith in, question mark, faith in what? Faith in Christ Jesus anointed. The Lord Jesus Christ sent Son the Anointed One, the Just One, the Righteous One, the Righteous Judge, the Lord Jesus Christ. Faith in. Now Nicodemus comes to mind, loving this present world, deserted Paul. Just heard a man give a good teaching on Antichrist. Uh, second Thessalonians, the second chapter, I believe, and then he went to 1 John. And he's right. He stayed within the Word. That's the Lord tells me all the time, Lord. The Lord tells me, Bernie, stay in my book, my word. You don't need anything more than that. Teach, preach, explain, make clear my word. Use your gift. Speak spiritually about my written word, the Bible. The living word, the eternal word, not one jot nor tittle <laughs> shall be lost or taken away. If the Holy Spirit of truth revealed it, it's good forever. Truth can stand alone. Charlie said that one. It stuck with me when he said it. Are you ready to do what Stephen did at the end of his life? Stephen is being stoned by the Jews. Stephen is Israelite. I don't know how much he practiced Judaism, the religion, but he's of the nation Israel. He's a disciple and apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, or at least a disciple. The book of Acts, 7th chapter, 59th verse. And they stoned Stephen. Stephen was calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus Receive my spirit, and I add soul. Lord Jesus, receive my spirit soul. We're all born with the spirit soul, and we must be born anew, not reborn, born anew. In other words, we have a spirit soul. It's the receptacle to plug the plug into. Now I'm talking electrical here, so you can get a, a vision. Uh, parallel story, parable. <laughs> We have a plug in the wall. It is female. We have a plug on the end of an extension cord. It is male. The Holy Spirit male, capital S Spirit Holy Truth, is plugged in to your spirit soul. Therefore, electricity or light or Christ anointing comes in. You're the receptacle you have received. Light, good, glory, bright, truth, honest, spirit word comes into the receptacle through the extension cord that's plugged in. You're born anew. Okay? Born of the spirit holy truth. Born anew. And you must be born of the spirit. You're born of the flesh came out of the womb water of your mother 
and you're born first of the natural, the flesh, but then you must be born a second time, born new of the capital S, spirit holy is God, spirit holy, truth is God. The spirit of God is truth. All right, I hope I made that clear. Now, Stephen was ready to say, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Here's my point. We do not stand in judgment to the wrath of God, nor do we have to take part in the second death that is spoken of in Revelation in Scripture. All right? But we may stand in a nuclear bomb blast in a major city. We may end up in a FEMA camp. I'm trying to figure out... I'm a, no, I'm not. I'm not going to chase that rabbit. But I am pondering, is there really over 3,000 guillotines in the United States in warehouses? What for? Why do they want to chop off heads? Are they preserving the human body for something? Can they do something with it? Like Soylent Green, can they feed the masses after they chop off your head? <laughs> Back to the scripture. So, are you prepared, no matter how you die, cancer, heart attack, automobile accident, FEMA camp, firing line, guillotine, however you lay down your body, as Stephen did, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit soul. Are you? Can you do that one? Are you ready to say that one? And are you praying? And I said this earlier, Christians don't know how to pray. You, you don't realize how important it is to take quiet time, meditation, after praying for your needs and speaking of your needs and some of your wants, to take quiet time, can you hear what the Holy Spirit of truth is saying to the churches, to the saint sons that are grown up, mature and responsible, that have gone beyond children, all right, and the milk of the word, to the meat of the word, discerning good and evil, choosing good, having their senses exercised, to know evil sense evil when you're around it. Uh, when your spirit has been indwelt by the Holy Spirit of truth, do you get that uneasy feeling sometimes, even though it looks perfect, even sounds perfect, that the Holy Spirit is giving you the uneasy feeling within, saying it's not what it looks like or hears like or seems to be. It's not my will, my truth. It's man-centered human concept. And all these false prophets are out there with their books, selling their books. This is the only book you need. Check this one out. This is kind of a cool one. It's a King James. I learned how to read in King James. It's snapped shut here. It's got a place to hold a pen. It's King James. I like the print for the size of the Bible. I bought this at Goodwill for $3.99 today. Fresh read unmarked by Bernie, except two or three hours ago I started marking it up. I read the third chapter of Ephesians. That's the starting place because the Gentiles, you and I, are mentioned there three times. The mystery is mentioned there three times. It is for us to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Do you know the mysteries of the kingdom? Have you taken the time to study, get a concordance, look up the 24 times that you find the word mystery? They are not 24 mysteries. It's the word mystery or mysteries plural 24 times in the New Testament. That's Acts through the end. That doesn't even include next or three times that the Lord use the word mystery in the Gospels, because I consider the Gospels an overlapping Old New Testament. The Lord was born of Mary's womb water, naturally of a woman under the law. 
The law is right up to the cross. Moses and the law, the Old Testament. After the cross, three days and resurrection, grace and faith, new, now, today, new, part two, new covenant, new testament, under grace and faith and under the Lord Jesus Christ. Salvation, eternal life is in the Lord Jesus Christ, not human blood. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Nicodemus, you must be born anew a second time of the capital S Holy Spirit of truth to see or to enter the heavenly spiritual kingdom of God. I'm quoting scripture. I'm paraphrasing or quoting, not chapter and verse, but how the spirit has given it to me in my heart, mind, in my spirit, soul, and from my clear conscience before the Lord. I repent every day. Lord, forgive me for my sins, transgressions, and iniquities, and fleshly sins. Every day, I clean my slate up with prayer. Hallelujah. And he does. He forgives. He's a merciful, what is it, mediator? Uh, he's the mediator between us and God. He will call our name before the Father and his angels because we called his name before men, living dead ones, unsaved humans on earth, that we are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, the Lord. And Stephen said, Lord Jesus. I'm always trying to make that point. If you're really grown up off the milk of the word, on the meat of the word, accurately handling the written word of God, rightly dividing, accurately handling, you will call Jesus Lord. You'll give him his deity. If you're running around saying, Jesus salvation, Jesus this year, babes on the milk of the word, unskillful. You really don't know what the word teaches. You may be in a baby, sincere milk, state of the word salvation, basic salvation. You may make eternal life, but you could have the will, plan, and purpose written in the word of God backwards, upside down, the cart before the horse, you got it backwards, you don't have it right, and you need to be wrenched out of Catholicism because Antichrist is in and through. Ever since the, uh, the gentleman used 222 AD, where apparently the, the bishop came in, the first bishop of Rome, Catholicism, and then 325 AD, and the later the word pulp comes on the scene. And there have been many, many antichrists, and there were many antichrists in the falling away of Asia from Paul's message. The guy that gave the last teaching I just listened to, I don't know his name, but he was very scriptural, very good. I wouldn't mind talking to him and asking him how many prophet teacher continuators are on earth right now. I know the exact number. And those who are of the continuator True truth prophet teachers know the exact number. <laughs> and I ain't telling you unless you've had a particular vision. I will tell you what the vision is. I'd like to talk to anybody who's ever seen themselves dressed in armor. If you've ever seen yourself in a vision or a dream dressed in armor, and I'm not promoting personal visions, I have questions for you. And how you answer those questions, I'll know where your election, elect, many are called, if you are chosen, if you're chosen, you're placed with a gift, mature and responsible to teach spiritual truth. The beeper went off. I got 60 seconds to sign off. Hope you got something from this teaching. Thursday evening, about 7 p.m. Love you. Bye.